Well, um, right, this is probably going to be the start of the second half of the action phase of, uh, we'll go well, we're on turn 10. I think this will maybe be part 12, maybe. Anyway, I had just finished off uh, with the, this half of the action phase and realised that it was getting too long. So, uh, just checking uh, any comments, and Martin's brought something up that is causing me a little bit of an issue. Um, uh, when he mentioned it, I was like, oh, wow, so I wouldn't have thought of that. But in saying that, after it's sunk in, I do feel again there's a, a wee bell ringing somewhere telling me that I've seen this before. And I think with these games, I don't know what it is. You, I mean, it's not that I opened up the rule book again and read through it again, just the basic rule book before I started playing this. Um, but when these things come about, I mean, this isn't really... I don't think this is clear in the rule book. I think this this is something that John Butterfield's have to had to clarify. And you could say, <clears throat> along with the old clearing the beaches and the engineers phase um, too, you know. Right, typical. I just started off there in a minute and a bit into it. I got dragged away. Um, so I've lost my train of thought. I'm not quite sure where I was. Um... Yeah, well, there's a slight issue come up. So, yeah, rules. Although, just glancing at the rule there, you know what? I could see there being some sort of talk about it, some questions asked. I've not went and looked up any discussions on it, but Martin's come back and said that John Butterfield confirmed uh, this situation. So, right, well, we might as well talk about what it is we're... We're talking about. Okay, well, this, uh, it happened over here, um, and ooh, well, things have changed a little bit. But uh, I'm just wondering if a better explanation of it somewhere else, maybe. Um, well, no, I'll just try and explain it where it is. So, what we had was. These two German positions uh, were occupied by German units, so it's, it's back quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, this is maybe, maybe I should look back actually, because if I, I'm just wondering, Martin, if I disrupted this after the situation. I'd be happy enough to say, well, look, if I knew that, I would try and disrupt it before I'd done what I'd done. So I'm going to have a wee look back just, just to see. The thing is with that, though, I'm guessing you maybe would have said, well, if you just do it the other way about, everything's fine. So, <laughs> But I'll go and double check anyway. Yeah, I figured as much that um, he would have said, look, if you just done it in a different order, then there's no, there's not an issue. Um but I didn't. I actually had to use the tank to make the attack. Um, it's difficult to kind of rewind back without actually looking at the uh, the video and seeing what's what. We made an attack on the unit in here. They were both on. They were both not disrupted. The the whole position. And I made an attack here. With an infantry and attack in the tank. That's what I was thinking. Maybe I disrupted afterwards with the tank, but I didn't. So and then we, uh, I get the feeling we removed the death marker and disrupted the unit. So that was fine. But this unit was undisrupted still. So I then moved uh, another infantry unit that I had here. Now, bear in mind, this is a German unit that's disrupted in this green position, and this is a German unit that's undisrupted. So I moved the German, I moved my infantry unit from here in the field of fire of green, adjacent to a disrupted German unit, into here, and I said I don't need to take an infiltration check because this unit's disrupted. Well, 
and this is what uh, Martin's come back and said that John Butterfield had confirmed that if if there's any other unit that's undisrupted in the position hex in the WN position, then me moving from there to there, this was disrupted. Me moving from there to there, this isn't disrupted. I still need to take an infiltration check. Um, sounds sounds a bit harsh, and it did start ringing bells after my shock of realizing that what is that right? And then then when it sunk in, I thought, yeah, you know what? I do remember reading something about this, but it has been a long time since I played the game, and that's where. That reading something it, that they're the things that haven't really stuck in your head because these are questions that are asked and I suppose what what you need is a whole new rule book with all these things built in and and then you need to like <laughs> wipe the old rule book from your head and then read the new rule book and get that to sink in. Eh? So it's kind of difficult. Um, these are the things that can catch out. To be honest, that's why I try to have a glance back at any questions that I'd asked before I sat down and played the game again. Because they're probably things that I'm not going to have remembered getting confirmation about, you know. Um, and you know what? It, I could even be involved in talking about that as well. I, I, I don't remember. Um, so, and, and, and he also points out, and this also for some reason rings a bell... If we had eliminated that position, so this position is empty, there's nothing in it at all, this German unit is still in here, but it's not disrupted, this position is empty. We go and move an infantry unit from here to here, remember this position is empty, but this one's not, and it's not disrupted. Uh, we move an infantry unit from here to here, that still classes as is, is needing a, an infiltration move. Now, it's because the they're joint. They're a joint nest position. You know, I think when you get in it, was it Tarawa, they start talking about tunnels. You know, there are, there's tunnels between the two. You know, they're, they're, they're both one, if you like. And although there's not tunnels here, but there's maybe, like, trenches. You know, they're, they're trenched together. They are one, you know. Um, and I'm... Uh, something's starting to say to me that once you get into the extended rules some of the lettered actions actually come into that with the two different positions but um, anyway just let me read infiltration move again 7.32 if you're moving a US unit from a hex adjacent to and in the field of fire of an occupied and non-disrupted German position right so that, that's it there and when I read that I thought oh Wait a minute, because this is a German position. This isn't a Ger this is a German controlled hex. They're, they're both different hexes, but they're one position. I think I'm getting. I, th I think this is. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I, c I could be wrong with that, but I think that's what we're meaning, and I think that's why. Then, if you look at the actual rule, it it, it it's telling you there. You know, um, so. If it's in the field of fire of an occupied non disrupted German position to a hex that is also adjacent to and in the field of fire of the same position, the US unit is attempting to infiltrate past the German position. So, you know, this could be empty. This one, as long as this is not disrupted, this could be empty. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to infiltrate past this position. So, that's what it is. It's written like that. I think I remember in like rightly in the next couple of games, uh, Tarawa and Pelu. There's a lot of questions come come up. I think regarding the fact that they're two, you know, they're two separate hexes, but they're joint, if you like. And uh, I even uh, oh, maybe shouldn't start going into that. But I've, I mean, I've got um, do you do that. Iwo Jima, um, and it wasn't John Butterfield that designed that. Um, uh, the other guy, uh, Joe Yost, does that? Who, who's he's done all the? Ma I think he does all that. He's done all the artwork for all the other games. Um, he must have took it on board. Um, and I think that gets even more complex regarding the like double positions and whatever. 
Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I mean, and then again, I'm reading on there. If the German position is no depth marker, but it could be that. If it's not that, that's been the intention, or it's been something like that. Because that, I mean, John Butterfield has confirmed that that move that we are talking about, and just let's look at even, even, well, not crazier, but like you know, think of like you would never have thought this. This is completely empty. There's nobody in this hex, and this. Right, let me just take this disruption away. There's nobody in this hex, right? And I want to move my infantry from there to there. I need to take an infiltration check. So, it sounds a bit weird. Now, once I've got an American unit, once I've got a US unit in here, then that's not a problem. I can go. And um, also, um, well, with that being disrupted, well, I think, so. I think that's the case. I mean, if this isn't disrupted and I've got US units in here, surely that's not an infiltration move. Then again, you would you would question? Would you question that? Because hmm. well, to be honest, you know what? What I've just explained to you there. <laughs> what I've just my explanation out of that that there would suggest that you still had to take like. Um, obviously if it's disrupted that's different but right now in that situation there, if this, this was my infantry move and I know it's not infantry but I'm just if I was to move from there to there then that doesn't that doesn't feel right does it but what I've just tried to explain to you there would suggest that you would still have to take that check Yeah, um, I might just retake this part of the video because <laughs> I need to ask if what I've just explained to you there is um, would actually have happened because now I'm I thought I had it, but now I'm not so sh not so sure. Uh, okay, I've had to go away and ask. Martin, just for a follow-up question regarding that, um, that if this hex had been occupied and this wasn't disrupted, would this still trigger an um, infiltration check? And it, it's a strange way of putting it, but I'm hoping he comes back with a yes, it would, um, because that then... Um, fills in the blanks for me and makes me understand that because if he says that that's not the case then we need more explanation or whatever so um, I'm actually thinking that yes the way he's worded um, his reply back well his comment back to me and the way I'm reading it in the rule book um I actually believe that that would be the case. So, that's even trickier to get around a bit. But you know what? There, there, there are some things that are ticking away there saying yes. It sounds strange. You're moving, by, you're moving by an empty hex and then you've got the chance of getting fired upon. But it's because, it's because these guys are, you know, you could consider that they're... But then... But then hold on, if we've got this hex, they can't, you know, if, if it is a trench, they can't be in this hex, because we are there. So, so maybe it's not, maybe it's not, um, again, maybe I could do a reading John Butterfield's confirmation on that, you know, explaining it. Um, that's two things that I don't think I've, I've seen, I mean, maybe... Right, you know what? I'm going to go and have a little bit of a look. I went to look for it, and uh, it's the first post that comes up regarding infiltration. And it was back in 2019, and it was somebody asking this question that they wondered if you would infiltration move if, 
you know, if it's a two hex position and just what Martin said, really. And um, they never got a complete answer. I think somebody I didn't ask John Butterfield, but Martin's come back and replied, linking the response from John Butterfield. But I'm thinking, well, this was back two years ago. He's posted that like five hours ago. So my guess is it's been something to do with this that's brought this on, that's brought that. I'd like, I mean, again, I'm not doubting what you're putting down there, Martin. Um, unless this is, of course, it might be just on the 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 Butterfield hotline again. You know, that's maybe Martin does that. He's He's got, he's like that. Well, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so, okay. But yes, I do. There's something. There's something that's ringing bells that I've seen this before. So maybe, maybe there is something out there as well. I, I just don't want to go hunting anymore. To be honest, I, I was hoping to finish this um, turn. Uh, and that's probably going to be it for the night. So things are <laughs> dragging on here a bit. Uh, I'm still not 100% convinced, though, about the question that I've just asked them now, that if, if this hex is occupied and this was undisrupted, would moving by this hex, you know, still, still be an infiltration move? It, it, it looks like it in the rules that it, it would be, but I, I could see it going either way, that one, because it feels a bit odd as well, you know. You know, if it, like the, right at the moment, in the position we were in, right, if it was my turn right now, and let's just take that disruption marker off, and this was an infantry unit, oops, and it's my turn, and I say, right, I'm going to move this unit from, I mean, don't get me wrong, you, the position I'm in, you, you wouldn't do that. Well, you certainly wouldn't do it if it's going to cause the issue that we've got. You would take care of this first. But if I was to move this from here to here, as an infantry unit, do I then have to take an infiltration check? That feels a bit odd. There's US units all over the place here. But this is still part of the green position. It's got a field of fire in here. It's moving from one hex to another hex adjacent to this position <laughs> uh, I don't know that is there's something well I need to be told one way or the other anyway I need to be sure about that one but um, well I post, I've sent the question back to Martin so hopefully he'll, he'll get back to me and let me know that one so however right getting back that's 18 minutes of nonsense Grant so it was this unit here that made the infiltration move, uh, or made the move that should have done an infiltration check. He then ended up, uh, well, this is yeah, this is where he'd done the move, and then Brown fired on him, disrupted him, and he lost a step. So I'm like, how do I resolve this? The unit should have done a check. I can't rewind all the cards. And Martin comes up with a great... <laughs> um, this, my computer's will be over there now. I don't have the laptop, so... Um, hang on. Right, I've just... I've, I'm holding my camera here. And you can see the map from a distance, just so you can hear me what I'm saying. Um, so, I asked him, I says, is it, you know, I says, not sure I can resolve this one, I'm afraid, any ideas? And uh, he says, we talked about that briefly during enemy action or den series. Shuffling a deck is a way of randomising the outcome of events. Now, why did you stop shuffling when you did? What if you had continued a few more seconds? My point is that the deck is only there to randomise outcomes. It doesn't really matter if you draw from the top or the bottom or the middle. It's just convenience. So if you skip the draw in this case or feel you need to draw a card after the fact, it doesn't really break game and your soul will not be smudged uh, well there you go so um uh yeah because I, I can't rewind the cards that have been drawn already and um do enough thought about that so what he said he, i mean he, he said i would maybe just skip it forget about it the odds of it 
trigger an, an infiltration hit are quite low, he says, or maybe just randomly draw a, a card. So I think I'd like to still draw a card. So um, it could mean that that unit's going to get eliminated. So Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do draw a card, and it would have been this unit, and he would have been in his four strength state, moving from here to here um, at the time. So, and then he would have then taken a hit anyway if he'd got there. So he could be eliminated. So, but we need a green triangle. So all I'm going to do is just cut the deck and draw a card at the middle, and then we'll put that in the pile. So I'll cut the deck. I've drawn a card, put the deck black. Uh, and I mean, it's a fair point when he talks about it. We do, we shuffle the deck and we say, right. And then you draw a card out of place and you think, oh no, I, I shouldn't have drawn that yet. I need, what do I do now? You know, I played this card. And it's all random. You know, it's like, we've got loads of cards there. So, okay. So if this is a green triangle, that unit's going to be eliminated. Okay. Right. It's not green. It's not a triangle. I'm chucking the card away, I'm not even looking at it. There you go. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm I'm really pernickety about doing everything by the book. And, well, uh, when you start, you, if you make mistakes, what, what can you do? That's the best I can do. So that guy survived that infiltration check, so we say. That's, that's all I can go by. Um, but we do need to find out that answer. I hope I haven't done it since. I looked back and thought I had done it again, but I actually disrupted this position. No, what did I do? Well, actually, you know what? I might have done it again then. If my quest, if my, if he comes back and says, yeah, if you move around this unit and that's not disrupted, then yeah, I might have done it again. Oh no, the pot thickens. Uh, okay, I just uh, double check back on things. It wasn't the actual move from here to here. It was, it was the infantry moved from uh, here to here. Anyway, it's it, it's the same. It would have still had to take the same infiltration check. You then moved up to here. However, I wonder if it could have happened again, but we did disrupt this position before we made any other moves. So we did make the disruption first, which I was glad about. I also was cringing. Um, yeah, it's, it was over on the other side regarding the orange position here. I thought I was maybe going to do it again here, unaware, like not thinking about it, because this position was empty. And, um, you know, right at the moment, Martin's saying that if I move this infantry, this orange position's not disrupted, right? If I move this infantry from here to here, that's an infiltration check. Because this position's empty. Um, and this unit is not disrupted. However, I looked back and I checked and we I disrupted the WM position before I'd done any kind of movement, so... You know, we eliminated this, then we disrupted that before we moved. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. But I still need confirmation on that one if we have a unit, if we get a unit in the hex. Does that then mean going round about it? Surely not, eh? Surely not. But I don't know, the way I'm reading it, that kind of says that, yeah, it maybe still applies. So that means you need to really still be disrupting the, the these units. You know, because they're, they're a double position. Okay, 24 minutes and we've done nothing. Right. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, hopefully if Martin comes back to me, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, we're going to do our action phase. We're going to finish our action phase in the, in the West because we've not done it yet. Uh, right, I'm going to have to pause and think about things. Right, I'll just get the things out of the way that I know I'm going to do. Well, this guy's in, he's in steady purple, so, and this isn't an infiltration move. There's no fire dots from blue. I'm not sure why, but 
I guess it's just focused on the beach, you know, must just, oh yeah, of course, these were like, you know, bunkers, pill boxes, like, they, they only had a, you know, arc of fire, if you like, I suppose, eh? so they didn't fire sideways or back the ways or whatever, whereas the other ones were maybe a bit different. I think that's it, I mean, like I say, need, need to re read that book. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll move him up there. He's a ranger, gets a free action. This looks like a nice, safe space to be. Um, I don't know if he might want to progress and grab one of these or not. Maybe, I don't know. It looks all awful vulnerable there on his own, but I'm sure something will pop up here and spoil it. But at the moment, where he is, there's no field of fire in his, in his space, so... That sounds good to me. Right, and then just moving slightly further along, this guy gets a free action to remove his climb marker. So next turn, he could have a go at this. We've already said this is bulkage, this hex, so probably want support from something else. Now, we've got these two rangers now that we've got rid of all the other stuff. <laughs> um, how did we lose that other guy? What happened to him? No, oh, he got hit from purple fire, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose we better, we could get them on we are. I mean, if we get them both into that hex... Ooh, that's a point. Should I just move one of them? Is that smart? And then move them both in together rather than weave one... And a sort of riskier hex. I mean, yeah, they're still in steady purple. And it's going to be the choice of two symbols if I do that. Uh, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, if I move him here and I move him there, they're still in steady purple. But this guy's going to be in steady green. Whereas if I weave... That guy there, and just move him into there. They're both in steady purple, but they're not. And so it would mean he would spend an extra. I mean, unless we felt like having an attack with a three strength. I don't think so. No, we've already seen how that happened already. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's better to take the chance to just have them both in that one hex for one turn, and then if they manage to get through that, they can attack together. I think. Well, you know what? I could come back to that just before I finish the turn if I think the other unit should move. Okay, what else we got? Um, right. Onto the the big stuff now. So we've got our HQ here. Um, right, he's moved up to there. Yeah, we're going to have a go at that next turn though, because the HQ can bring this in, like we've already talked about. Um, although we we eventually realised that he couldn't bring the artillery in. Um. Yeah, this orange position, we need to... That's probably a priority, in it? Yeah. Yeah, we need to be attacking here. So we need to decide what it is we're attacking with here. So the, the good thing is there's no bonuses to them because this, this unit is able to come in just this way. Um... We can get support from a tank, a smaller strength tank, a ranged infantry. Um, which my guess is can go. This is, yeah, hang on. Now, it's just a bit concerned with the word done. A heavy infantry unit range of two may attack across a bluff or cliff hex side. So I think what I was asking back there over at the, well, hang on, I'll just swing around. 
over here about this guy attacking. He's attacking across this cliff hex side. He's also attacking across this bluff. He's two hexes away. So, yeah, I guess he can do that. I think I'm confusing it by when it says across a bluff, I'm thinking you need to be, you know, adjacent to it. Because normal infantry can't attack adjacently across a bluff. But these would, and I'm... I'm reading that as a rule that says you need to be adjacent. Um, I don't think that is the case. Um, yeah, I don't think so. And I think that then means... Uh, what was that? Yeah, I was considering this attack across this bluff here, but he's two hexes away, but he, he's not actually adjacent to the bluff. But I, I think I'm making more of that than needs to be. I'm pretty sure this infantry can attack there. I mean, the tanks certainly can, so... Well, oh, well I'll tell you what, if the tank can't, then the, or if the infantry can't, then the tank can't, surely. Eh... Uh, Okay. Okay, it's, it's funny how I started across there and I've moved across and then I've said, well, this is important. And then I've realised that this needs to be dealt with as well. Uh, I guess it's just because it scared me because brown's not disrupted anymore. I mean, neither's orange, but um, this is probably going to be one of my actions again just to put this guy down, I guess. So he's only two strength, but we don't have the radio still. So, yeah, I mean, if I use an action to attack with both of them, six strength against their two, we've got, we don't have the weapons, but they're double. Oh, <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, but then that means I've got to use a second action, Martin. Uh, you know, I was asking about some advice on attrition. When, when maybe to use it and you know I'm not sure I was also asking about delaying units I, I guess I might get some feedback regarding that um, Martin has said that he would have uh, the attack that we made on this he would have used attrition probably would have used attrition sacrificed that unit okay and then his second action would be to bring that other unit up into there. Now that's pretty clever, isn't it? I think it sounds bad and well, I think a lot of the decisions you've got to make in this game, if you're you know, if you're thinking personal thoughts and horrible thoughts, then you know it's a game, but I know it was real. Um uh but you you know, you've got to I guess these decisions probably were made, you know sacrifices were made um however uh you you've got to just we've got to just try and play it as a game and we're playing it for enjoyment and uh, yeah okay I'm, I'm getting deep there okay i better not go down that alley um but that does make sense then we've got two four strength we've got two four strength infantry units in there we I mean we've now got the radio that we would well we're getting rid of that radio, so... But we've got eight strength. We're just going to bash through that, and then and then we're moving on, you know? Look how long I've been sitting here. And like he says, you've got... You're limited. Your time is limited. You've got to get yourself ready for... They keep putting reinforcements down. Um, you know, you've got to get... You've got to keep moving. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point of that. So, yeah, that was a good point. However, now I would be in the position where if I was to do that, my two actions would be there, and that would be that. Well, I think we'd probably still take a barrage attempt on Brown here. And just go for the single step. And. 
I mean, all these units here get a free move. This ranger gets, sorry, or probably just off camera. This ranger gets a free move. These four units get a free move. This, even this ranger that we've left sitting here thinking we're probably going to leave him is a free move. So we are kind of free, we're kind of spoiled this turn. With, um, ha and this gets a free move. So we've got uh, we've got one, two, three, four separate stacks or units. These are two single units. This is a stack, this is a stack. And we've got two actions to spend between them all. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. A uh, so yeah, so like he's just like Martin has suggested, I could do that. And I could use my second action to move that, you know. We're still leaving this guy down here. Well, Brown will be taken care of. Well, I'm assuming this is if my barrage goes. I mean, maybe we need to try that and make sure that works. We still have the other tank in here, but we kind of want to barrage red with it. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, I'm hoping this isn't the start of bad things popping up. I went through a spell of enemy action with this, where everything was going nice and smooth, and I was cruising along, no problems, and then you got a wee blip here and a wee blip there, and then a couple of errors here, and there was a wee spell I went through where I wanted to chuck the towel in, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but these uh, they get they're tough games to keep on top of, and you're trying to be clever and you're wanting to do the clever things, but then you break rules like I done here. Um, this guy can't cross the single. Thanks, Martin. Um, now he moved across with the infantry. I'm pretty sure from here, right? I better just double check. I. Don't think there's any harm done. Um, I just leave them back in the hex. Why would I have moved them there anyway? Why was there a reason I wanted them there? I don't think so. I'll just double check the move. Maybe it's just because he was stacked with other guy and it was to move them both. <laughs> I actually just I say yeah I'll just move this infantry and anti-tank unit across here you know I actually say it's an anti-tank unit and then just proceed to move it across the shingle um, I think the HQ ends up in there with them the HQ's not moved about from there so he would have stalled so I'm just going to lay him back there where uh, now that wouldn't have had any effect at all surely because he's still in steady red and sporadic green um, I don't know what episode he's, he's watching is it the latest one I don't think there's an issue with me just moving them back here they did get a free move they were all stacked with the HQ in here and I think the HQ ended up there and then backtracked into there and then this this guy was the one that stacked so basically what happened was well I better not they all moved into there that shouldn't have done and then the, the HQ had followed them. And then the next turn, I think the HQ went into here. This guy had done the cheeky wee infiltration move up there and got away with it. For some... <laughs> I don't know if that's a wise move or not. But Well, actually, yeah, we know what we want to do with him, don't we? We want to try and climb him up that bluff. Yeah, okay, well, let's get back to it. So he's getting a free move. And that's not going to be an infiltration move. And he's going to climb. I say I'm not awfully sure it's awfully clever, but yeah, he, he won't be able to support the attack next turn. I suppose he's out of HQ range now as well. Um, yeah, but we can still get the support of this. And what is this again? This is. Anti-aircraft. 
One, two, three, yeah, so... Ooh, it's an intense... Oh, has this just come on the board, doesn't it? Yeah, we want to move that, actually. We don't want it sitting in intense red. It's still got... I mean, it's only one strength, but it brings along some weapons, too. Um... Well, it could go in either, I suppose. Uh, so have I got... Yeah, I'm just on camera. I noticed I'm quite well zoomed in, I'm an but... Um, okay, let me think. Yeah, it's just... I was just having a look. I mean, you could, you could go either here or here. But it's kind of steady red fire. Oh, he's armoured, doesn't he, Grant? He's armoured, so don't fret about him too much. And I thought, well, there's a safer hex there, and he can still hit the red position, but he can't hit the green position from there. And, uh, mind you, are we, are we ready for green? Well, there's no, there's no enhancements to that either, is there? So maybe we are. Um, and I certainly want to move him out of the hex he's in because he's in intense red. Yeah, here he's in range of both, you know. Okay, I think I'll go for that. Right. Uh, this guy's this artillery underneath it's In all honesty, it might be safer back there just now because it can't can't really do anything. The artillery needs to be the HQ needs to control an infantry as well, or c command an infantry. That's the problem with that one. That's attacking the unit. Uh, does that? Oh, there's a question. If the HQ was in command of a ranged infantry, oh, let's go and see how it's worded. Mm, actually, yeah, that works, doesn't it? Well, going going by what I'm reading, so it says in command of an HQ. This is talking about artillery units in range, but not adjacent to the target, and in command of an HQ, not a general, that is also commanding at least one infantry unit attacking the position. So, um, yeah, to give you an example, if, if this HQ was here and we decided to attack this position with us and command of this general, we attack this position, this gets a free attack from the general. Uh, well, actually, no, he then gets a free command from the HQ, this infantry, and then that I think that artillery would be able to join in. Because this HQ is commanding this uh, infantry that's attacking, and yeah, right, what did I do? I moved that from there, didn't I? So, yeah, that's one to remember, but there's not many of them about. Only got one on this side, I think, and one on the other side. But something to think about. I'm running out of time here. I don't think I'm going to get this completed. Um, pretty sure I'm going to run out of time. So, yeah, better. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to take a pause now, guys, so I'll probably just cut the video. thing is, I've already split this into two, so I can't go and upload, upload this as another part, I don't think. So I'll get this finished up. You know, I, I might get the chance to get back, but if not, I'll need to leave it till the morning. But obviously, I'll just be joined on the back of this. Um, but yeah, I better leave it for now. I'm... I'm, I'm 
I've moved a few units. I, I, I tilt them all 45 degrees, so they're the ones that I've done something with, but there's still plenty to do there and, and think about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so. I'm so. Okay, cheers. Hi, all. Right, let's see if we can get turn 10 finally fast. Uh, we're getting longer and longer right in our front there. I should have realised this was going to happen. Um, right, as usual, there's always something to talk about. Um, yeah, I got member the. Well, hang on. Yeah, there was there was two things Martin came back with. Well, I, I, eventually I'd asked this other question and uh, eventually got a, an answer from him. But um, the other one he was talking about was the Queen the Beaches thing again. And basically he said, look, if there's if the colour comes up in the card and the position is occupied by a German unit, then you can't clear that hex. That's it. I mean, doesn't matter if it fires, doesn't matter if it's disrupted, doesn't matter. If there's a unit in the hex and the colour's there, you cannot clear that hex. So I, I, I replied to him, I said, that's how it should be written in the rules, really. But, um, you know... Uh, I think that's one of the ones that's maybe caused quite a bit of um, confusion between people and frustration as well because they're thinking, well, wait now, they've not fired, you know, they've not fired. We sure we can clear this hex. So I think if it had been written better in the rules, that uh, would have been clearer to everybody. Um, you know, he does say the only exception is if you get the smoke event. Um, I think uh, something like that anyway but um well if we get that we can look at that um another one I, I wanted clarification on of course was this situation we're moving past a double position and this is where it happened in my case here or actually it almost happened elsewhere as well but I got away with that one um and um you know, if this person, position is empty or if it was disrupted German unit and this one wasn't, it still can be an infiltration move moving around it. Um, but my big question at the end was, well, hang on, let's, let's just take that away just now. What if um, we have this hex occupied and this guy's not disrupted? Now, if I make a move... Right, I understand if I make a move from here to here... That's an infiltration move because this guy's watching me, ready to fire at me. But what if I move from here back to here for some strange reason? What if I move from here to here past my own unit, still past the green position that's got the same field of fire? I says, does that count as an infiltration move? And Martin's replied with, although the the response he got, the confirmation he got from John that wasn't part of the example that was given. He believes that the way it's written, then yes, that would still require an infiltration check, even though it's your units here, because this fire, this position is still part of, you know, the whole two thing. Now, so it kind of means you've got to keep these guys disrupted and, you know, even when you're round about them, you think you're safe and whatever. Um, it's nice to have it that way as well, but, um, yeah, so I have to keep it in mind. Um, that one's, I think that's easy to miss. I could, I got my head round about the fact that if this German position was occupied and, and disrupted and this one wasn't, it was still classed as an infiltration move. And even to an extent, if this position was empty and this wasn't disrupted, then it would be an infiltration move. When it comes to US units in the hex and moving round about it, I don't quite... Get. I mean, here's us at the back of the hex here. If this was an infantry unit moving from here to here and this wasn't disrupted. Sorry, I know I'm probably going over this part too, too much. Um, it just, this kind of feels a bit wrong somehow. I don't know. If this was an infantry moving from here to here, he's got to take a, a check. I don't, know. I don't know. I think, I think when it comes to units occupying the hex, I think. There should be something different there. Um, but, well, okay. We'll just go by what's been said and we'll just have to keep an eye out on that one because I think it could be 
an easy one to mask, but hopefully it's stuck in my head now. Right, let's get on with the game. Right, so just refreshing my memory where we are. We've, we've moved this up the back. We climbed, this had climbed, so the climb markers come off that. We made a climb of that infantry unit. We moved, ah oh yeah, we moved this ranger along to join this other one with the thinking that we'll leave the other one there and just move them together into this hex. So there's less chance of, well, I think anything could still happen, but... Um, yeah, and we eventually back, we eventually backtracked this. Martin had noticed this one when I had crossed the shingle. Uh, not sure what I was thinking. I think because the shingle comes down there, you know, it cuts in a bit. Um, but I mean, I should have noticed that. Um, yeah. Um, so what did I do with this guy? Was this guy disrupted? Is that why he's... Yeah, I'm assuming he must have been disrupted, I think. Okay, so we've got all the stuff in the middle here to decide what we're going to do. Um, and we've not used any actions yet. It's all been three actions up to now. So, yeah, we are going to make an attack on this, aren't we? And it's what we're going to bring in is the big thing. Because he's not getting any bonuses. And this is a full strength infantry unit. You know? So, you know, it does right away make you think, well, do I even need to bring anything else in? Kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's a gamble, whatever you do. But the fact that these are all going to be free actions to bring stuff in, I mean, this tank could support, but I'd like to be using that tank, one, two, three, four, yeah, I'd, be, I'd like to be using that tank to barrage red. I would think that would be the plan. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember I was asking the question. It was another thought I had. But I, I think the question's answered in the rule book. If an HQ commands an infantry unit, so say it's this ranged infantry unit it commands. Um, and it also commands an artillery. You know, um, oh, um, yeah, I went over that yesterday. Let's not go there yet. It's the, if it's commanding an infantry that's attacking the position, uh, then it can command an artillery unit and, and can attack that position as well. Um, that's the way it's written. So, um. So I think possibly I would like to use that uh, tank. Oh, however, here we're in the same situation. Should I not just use the ranged infantry? Because I almost blundered with that the time before. Because if I'm if the ranged infantry is not going to make a move, if it's not interested in moving, then why not just use that? And I could possibly use the tank to have a go at barrage and one, two, three, four. Well, he could actually reach green. Uh, right, I'm talking Robert. Oh no, yeah, he's in Commander General. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually just looking back there and the tank's under here, so one, two, three, four, five. But I don't really see the great need to barrage green. These are in sporadic green. This, These are in sporadic green, just on the very edge of the camera there. This is in sporadic green. But the red, there is a couple of units in steady fire and red. So, um, using that, of course we've got brown as well, haven't we? Well, we've also got this guy to do brown. Oh, right. Again, moving about again. Right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to attack with us, and I'm going to support it with the two strength tank. So that gives us 8 strength. That's all I'm going to use. I think. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. So 8 strength. And like I say. There's no. There's no enhancements. 
That zoom that 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 must be the focus. I just clicked on something there and it focused. Uh, okay. I maybe need to start using it. I know sometimes when I watch it back it, it gets blurry sort of outside the range that I'm that I'm focused on. I suppose maybe that's natural when it's wanting to get a crisper picture and right and right where you're looking, eh? Maybe the bright maybe the brightness there's getting brighter as well. Okay. Uh anyway. So yeah, like I say, he's not in a oh well, you know what? <laughs> I've just revealed him, but we're gonna do it anyway. Shangs, it's another three. I, I I always thought the threes were all kept for the reinforcements. Um so no, he's not getting any bonuses. Um so we've got a three. Fortunately he's not getting doubled. And now BG and BR, well that infantry alone brings both BG and BR, the full strength infantry. So we're good there. So I've got eight strength against this three. We are doubled. Got the weapons. Right, we're looking at the WN death marker now. Ooh, yuck. Right. It's naval fire. Naval, naval artillery in it. Uh. Well, we don't have that. This is a bummer. Right, here's, here's the, here's the, another in another spot where I'm wondering about attrition. But my attrition would have to be from this unit there because it's got to be a unit that's adjacent. I'm pretty sure of that one. Naval fire. Yeah, that that's the only one that you get. You need a naval fire marker. Or a hero. And my hero is a tank, so he's not gonna get up there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this this is this is one that you really want to seriously consider a trish and I don't want to do it on a full strength infantry. The good thing is we've got eight strength against four, so we're still doubling it. We don't have the weapons. So we are disrupting it. Uh, this is when you kind of want a little sacrificial lamb to like put out there, but there's nothing. I mean, the the thing is, if I if I take a if I use one of these to take a hit, you know, I'm talking about maybe next turn, maybe move this guy up and then attrition with that. Then that's one that's one of the catastrophic loss. So I don't want to do it with that. Do I consider it with that? I mean, Martin's comment on that was that he generally does attrition all the time unless it's going to affect his catastrophic loss situation. Um, I think that's how he put it. Um, certainly here, when I made the when I made the attack here initially, he said he would sacrifice this unit underneath, and then move this unit into here and then actually got rid of the radio situation and if I get the action, if I do have the two actions this turn I might well actually do that but but as for like taking as for like taking a step off of this to get rid of that naval artillery marker uh, but how, how else am I going to get rid of it I just got cut off of that nonsense app thing flapping, flashing up again. If anybody knows, I mean, like I say, I reset the phone. I think I'm, I may have had to install, is it Google Play or Play Store or something like that? Um, but I never even put anything on it, and I just keep getting that coming up every so often. If anybody's got any idea, I mean, I know I've, I'm, it's, I'm giving you limited information that something's popping up on my phone, but if anybody might know what I'm going on about and has a has an answer for me, then uh, let me know. Cheers. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I can't remember where I actually got cut off there, but we're, we're talking about the possible attrition here because that naval artillery marker is going to sit there until we either get a hero involved... 
And like I say, we've not got one we can move into place because we put it on a tank. Okay, guys, okay. And then we've uh, got the only other possible is drawing a naval fire marker. Because none of the units at all give naval artillery. So what do we do? I get the feeling that a lot of you are thinking that the right thing to do is to take the take the attrition. Um I and I thought, you know what? Okay, let's do it. But then I started doubting my well, I don't wanna do it and I don't wanna knock a full strength infantry down. But then I'm thinking, what am I doing next? Where am I going next? I mean, okay, I've got to hang around and finish this guy off. Um, but what am I doing next from that position? And, uh, well, I've not got a clue, really. Because um, looking across the brown here, I mean, yeah, we've got these guys coming up, and I, and I think I'd like to get that move. I'm, I'm hoping I've got the two actions to spare to do, do that. Um, because there's bluff all around this other brown position. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've really got to try and get something up into here, haven't we? Admittedly, we can get this ranged infantry up to, to be able to, to fire across at it if we can get an infantry into here to attack it. But this is, this is the only place that we can attack. Into that, isn't it? Um, and that's going to take a little while as well. And meanwhile, what do, what do I do? Do I start heading more inland? I'm not. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think you have that much to do on the beaches and that. That once you get up there, you think, "Hey, where we?" I mean, I kind of know the purpose. I mean. We get if we get units off the map at the exit hexes, we gain points. There was somebody made a comment I noticed um, on the BGG forums recently about how they felt that um, that was a kind of easy out, if you like, about an easy way to get points where he didn't feel like it was realistic and the more realistic way of winning it was to take the draws and control the draws but it felt like it was easier to exit units it was something along the lines but um uh I've, like i say i've never i've never played the game to completion anyway so hopefully going to do it this time but we'll see six units in the lost box on this side so we're going to have to be very careful to do with them. And that's the other thing. If I do take a hit on this guy, that's another one that's on the edge. So that's going to be three, four. That'll be five of them vulnerable to catastrophic loss. And I can only take one more. On this side, anyway. Uh, right. Yeah, because my, my fear is that Obviously, these are going to be my strongest units, the four strength units. Um, so they're the ones that you're going to try and push forward to maybe do something like, I mean, go up, try and take this orange position. But as soon as I move it into there or anywhere around about that position, well, that would be silly moving into these ones. But, uh, you know, they're all steady fire around about it. So, and then, yeah. So as soon as I get them in that position... And if he's a f four strength, you know, I've got to... If Orange turns up and hits some, that's him in the lost box. And I've only got one to spare. So I'm kind of really restricted to what, I, to what I go and do with my better units. It kind of feels like I'm tied down here. I need to make more, like, safer moves. Should I be going back and trying taking out some of the other WN. You know, should I move back this way maybe? Because no, nothing's been touched in that area really. Because Maybe. You know, maybe clear out this nest 
and then move the HQ and some units back this way to help out clearing some of the stuff there. Uh, and then, sorry. And then this stuff here and, well, you know, a, a wee bit of this going that way and a wee bit of that going to the HQ to come up and clear out brown. Should that be our target before turn 17 comes along, turn 16? I think because we're so restricted, and in particular on this side, we can maybe take more chances on the other side. Mm. Could that then mean we don't take this attrition loss and keep him sick? But then this is eventually going to become undisrupted, so we're going to keep having to either disrupt it, and to disrupt it, we need eight strength attacking it every turn. Well, every turn it becomes undisrupted. Ah, that's a horrible position to be in. There's not this one good thing. This reduced side has mortars, BG and BR. And this guy requires BG and BR, so... The good thing is, if we take the hit, remove the marker, we're then attacking next turn with 6 strength against... Uh, sorry, 4 strength against 3, so greater than... And we're still going to have the weapons, which is enough to take them out, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm struggling to force myself to do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't really think I have much of a choice. You know, because there's not even another infantry unit close by that I could say, well, I could spare you, you know? I mean... This one went away that way, but by the time we get him back along, it's yeah. okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So we take an attrition hit, and well, but and the we had double anyway. So we had the eight against. Sorry, that's before before I flip on. We had eight against four. But we didn't have the weapons. So we had double. So Germans are disrupted and I get an optional attrition. And let me double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be No, I looked at this already, didn't I? Or did I? Optional attrition, you may opt to remove a step from an adjacent attacking unit to eliminate the death marker. Yeah, so it's not that I could take the tank out, which kind of makes sense. Uh, uh well. I don't know. That, that, that doesn't feel good. But it may well be that it's the right choice. I, I don't know. Well, I felt like I've been lucky over some of the counter that some of the counters have flipped over in previous games anyway. Although that that being a three there we were okay with, eh? It was just the depth marker that it brought with it. Right, okay, let's keep going, Grant. So uh, what do I want to do next? I also just noticed this is actually sitting in red fire from this position, which isn't occupied, but if it were to be, that'd be horrible as well. Uh, okay. Right, I think I'm going to do... Yeah, we might as well go nuts. So, that will be your two actions of Grant, remember. Yeah, I'm fine with that. This guy's not, um, I mean, he's still in red fire, but he's not concentrated anymore, so I'm not really that fussed about him anyway. Right, so I'm going to take an action to attack with these two against us. Um, so no enhancements, but we don't have the radio. So we'll go to six against their two. So this is an action. 
So that's against two. So we don't have the weapons, but we do have double. So we're at the same position again. Germans have disrupted an optional attrition. And yeah, let's go nuts. So I'm going to attrition this unit away. And they're disrupted. Um, oh, and we get to remove that radio. As well. Okay. Right, this tank's going to barrage Brown again. Now it's just a single position Brown. He's a four strength with a triangle. So we need Brown or a triangle. And we get the Brown. Good. Right, so that makes... It's a bit better. We've we'll got them tied down. Uh, yeah, so pretty sure that pretty sure my second action is going to be to move this infantry onto here beside him. Then we can <laughs> BG. Oh, it was the what? It was the wee unit that had the BG. Ah, yeah, yeah. He's bringing the BG. That's the thing. That's, yeah, okay. So that's, that works. <laughs> yeah, because it was the unit that we attritioned the way that had the BG, I think, in the first place, didn't it? Or did it? Maybe it didn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had the BG, just not the radio. Yeah, well, I guess you would have had to, to, to reveal the death marker, would you not? Yeah. Um... Okay, where are we at? Yeah, everything else is getting free moves anyway, that I'm interested in anyway. I mean, I'm not not so fussed about this. I mean, um, yeah, it'd be nice to have that out of the red fire, but this is more important. So my second action is going to be moving this unit into this Hex. Oh, right, right. They're both on the four strand side. Okay, so that's our that's our two actions taken. Uh, okay, so this tank, which is four strength as well. I'm going to have a go at barraging uh, the red. So I can do that because... Well, actually, can I do it? Oh, maybe it can't. We need an infantry in red. Don't we? Oh, hang on. Um, now, do these rangers count? Or that's not even on the map. These two rangers run sporadic red fire. Um, and this tank is in command of this general. So does that work? I think it does. I think that's how we were doing it, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess just the whole distance is kind of making me doubt things there. But, I mean, it does say that... Also, just just notice I read this. I, I, I hadn't done it, and I think I might have, I might have clicked. Was a uh, tank unit may conduct... This is 8.4, conducting a barrage action. A tank unit may conduct an action to barrage a German occupied hex if the tank unit is in range of, but not adjacent to the target hex, um, which is something I maybe hadn't sort of thought about. I've, I've not done it, and I think it might have sort of rung a bell when if I was trying to barrage adjacent. Generally, if you're adjacent, anyway, you've got infantry adjacent, you're going to attack it. And then it says, any of the following are true. Tank unit occupies a hex in the field of fire, target hex. Well, that's not the case, but second one is an undisrupted infantry unit and I'm pretty sure when it comes to saying just infantry there, um, rangers count for that. Um, 
they're still infantry units. Um, an undisrupted infantry unit occupies a hex in the field of fire of the target hex. So that has, I mean, it's only a sporadic fire, but it's still a hex in the field of fire of it. The infantry unit is considered to be observing for the tank. Observing is not considered an action. If an infantry unit is observing for the tank unit, either the tank unit or the observing unit must be in command of an HQ or a general. Uh, well, this tank is in command of that general. So, yes, it... I mean, it doesn't specify that sporadic fire wouldn't be... I mean, that's still a field of fire. Yeah. Field of fire. It is a field of fire. And then unit types, Ranger, Infantry Company. I, I, I think I'm trying to find a way out of we have not been able to do it for some reason. Okay, so we can do this. So now I've forgot what symbol it was. Triangle maybe? No, diamond. Um so oh no it doesn't matter but the because it's a double position, yeah, that's why. So it's just red. So we need red, we're disrupting this, he's observing for us. So we need red. And we got it. Good, so that takes a wee bit away there as well, which is nice. Um, it's been a bit clumsy today, my counters. Um, okay, so still two or three units to maybe decide what to do with around about the general and the HQ. So I feel like I'm now at this position about I need to know what it is I'm going to do after we take out this orange position because this guy can take out the orange position uh, unless it builds, a, builds another uh, death marker which like, it's not impossible but um, so what do, we, what do we do with the rest? What do I do with this ranged Infantry, do I start moving it back or do I use this to help take out this? Because these guys can take out this as well. Am I really going to need that range infantry? I don't know. Uh, I could be scratching my head for ages here. So, what I think I'm going to do is try and eventually get the ranged infantry into here so that he can support a fire into here. I'm going to keep one of the tanks round about here as well. And then I'm going to start moving some stuff back that way. I don't know if this was right or not. I, I, I think what I should probably go, do is go away and read maybe the later part of the rule book and um, just find out what it is I'm, I'm trying to achieve. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've, I have played the game, you know, into the later turns. I've been in the extended game quite a few times. It's just been a while ago and you look at the positions and, and I think with my catastrophic loss situation, I'm kind of frightened to move, well, up the map south, if you like, because it just, Feels like I'm tempting fate, really. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking then. So I'm going to move him in beside where the oh, general was. Right, all that just flipped over. That is not full strength. I don't think that's even on camera, is it? Yeah, it's just right. He was he was reduced. I flipped them both over. Uh, yeah, and he hadn't done a move, but he's not getting a move anyway. So, yeah, so move the range infantry. And then, obviously, I started thinking, well, you know, move this guy, but I, I think I maybe got enough going across here, and, and maybe I should just backtrack. Uh, I mean, I've got two four-strength units in there. Um... You know, do I need any more? I've got one there and one there. 
I think the two going up there and then supported by some range should be able to take that position out. So So yeah, and I don't feel like we've got enough going that way. And there's a lot of WM positions still in place. Right, so I guess this could be kind of controversial, but I'm going to move this guy back then. I say I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, um, don't feel the need to have that ranger going that way. So, I mean, he just came up here right enough, so he's going to go that way too. Uh, the one thing I could utilize after finding out this artillery commanded by the HQ, if if I could also command that ranged infantry and have a, an infantry adjacent attacking something, then I could benefit from that artillery. Um, mm -mm -mm. So, I actually think I might just be leaving everything else where it is. I started thinking about moving this and moving these, but I want to keep that in command of the HQ, this. So that, because that can, that's got, that can reach this. Um, so we could have an attack with this infantry next turn into there and get support from that at least. So and then the general, I want to keep him close to this guy. Or HQ. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave everyone else where it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to be done with that. I think. Um, I don't know, I think now could be a good time for me to just take a little break from the game and um, if I wanted, you know, now's maybe a chance to, to move on to the other table and have a wee shot of fire in the lake and just maybe read further on in the real, real book or just try and get some grasp on what I'm better to do. I think it's, a, it's the catastrophic loss problem that's, you know, I, I think if I didn't have that, I could see myself thinking, well, let's go and get that orange position up there and let's try and get more of this draw taken care of and whatever. And, um, Because, I mean, it does look like we're taking care of this this part here, so which is quite good, I think. Okay, right, well, this is probably went on long enough, so um, I maybe will, that's another few few parts I've uploaded again, so I maybe will try and force myself later on today to um, just put a wee hold on this and then it might give me some time to also hear any feedback about what I've been going on about and if there's anything that you know, if I'm if I'm right and thinking maybe I should concentrate and try to take out more of this this west side of some of the WN units, rather than trying to risk going forward with with the situation that I'm in. Okay, guys. Um, right. Well, tidy up and we'll just have a glance at the final picture then, because that's us. That's our action phase done. Okay. Okay, so there we go, the end of turn 10, so moving on to turn 11. Uh, we get that other, uh, we get the general one, don't we? That's good. Um, yeah, but this may be a step back, whether, whether I'll be able to do it or not, because I'll probably come up to the and think, oh yeah, let's get going again, but maybe I just need to have a wee think about what, what my plan is. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys, I'll leave it for now, and, well, I'll be back at some point, okay? Cheers.